In this short video I'll show you six tips on improving your labels or your label expression more, to be more precise. So first let's turn on some labels for our parcel layer here. So I'll just activate uh, automatic labels and you'll notice it just picks a, a random or a predefined column here. In this case I don't want to show a, a specific column, I actually want to show the size of the polygons. So in order to do so I'm going to go to the labels tab and from here I'm going to select the label using drop down and here I'm going to select expression. So in the expression dialog I can quickly use a function to actually calculate the area of the uh, polygons. So from the functions drop down I'm going to select area. I can change the the area units here as well so as you can see here it's hectare, I'm going to change that to square meters instead and say OK. And now you can see that each of these polygons they have actually been labeled with their size in square meters. Now you'll notice that they have decimals as well, right? So they are quite precise sizes here, right? For my purpose I don't need the decimals, so I'm going to use a function to actually round the values a bit. So to do so, I'm going to go back into my label tab and from the drop down here, I'm going to select expression again to modify my expression. I'm going to go to the start and from the functions list again, I can select round. I need to modify this a bit. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to the end and I'm going to specify that I want to round to the nearest whole number. In that way I'm going to round my areas to the nearest square meter. I could have also, if I wanted to round to the nearest uh, decimal, I could specify 0 0.1 instead and that will round to the first decimal. I could also use two decimals by adding a, another 0 here or I could even add a 0 after and that way round to the nearest 10. I'm going to stick to the whole number, so I'm going to change that to 1 again. I'm going to say OK. And now you can see now the numbers have actually changed to whole numbers. So it's a bit easier to read. It's quite clear what the sizes are, but it's not quite clear what the units are when you look at the map. So let's modify that a bit again. So in order to do so, we will add a, another text after that one. But if we do so, we're going to change our formatting here. So the formatting here is actually done by MapInfo when you show a numeric value on a map as we do here. It's going to use the regional settings from your computer to actually change the way it displays a number. So that's also why you see a, a point here between the, uh, the groupings instead of a comma as you normally see in, in the US regional settings, for instance. So in order to keep that formatting, I need to actually format my numeric number as a text. So I'll just go that route first. So let's go back into the expression dialog. And I'm going to use a, a specific function that's called format number. So I can use this one. I'm just going to delete the end parenthesis here. And now I got a a function again here I'm going to use. I'm going to round or format my rounded area. Just say OK. And you don't really see any difference here because the text was already formatted the way I wanted it to. But you might have seen the change if I didn't do this because when I now concatenate a text to my numeric number, it would actually have stopped formatting it. But let's go back. And now we're going to add that additional string so that I can see the unit here. I'm going to use the expression again. I'm going to specify that I want to combine that with another string, which is the m. And then I'm going to use another function that is called character. You see that here as well. And I'm going to use the character 178. I'm going to say OK. And you notice that it now shows that it's squared meters. So the 
character 178 actually takes the ASCII code 178 and converts that to the matching string. So in this case it's the squared string that it shows here. So that gives me a good uh, idea on what is actually the sizes of these polygons I'm looking at here. Now another thing I want to do here is actually add the name of the of the parcels or the APN. So I'm going to go back into the label expression dialog again. And I'm going to add another column in front of it. I'm going to, from the columns list, I'm going to select the APN. And I want to position this on a separate line. So I'm going to add another char function call here. And this time I'm going to use the ASCII code 10, which gives me a new line character. So that means that the APN code is going to be on one line and then it's going to show the size of the polygons on the next line. Okay, so now you can see the APN and the size of the polygons below it. It's getting close to what I'm looking for with my map here. I have one final tweak I want to use here. So I want to only label the bigger parcels. And to do so, I'm going to use a conditional a label expression. I go back into the expression dialog and this time I'm going to use a, a a new function called if so if takes three parameters the first parameter is a condition you're going to check so in this case I'm going to check if the size of the the polygons basically the area of them in square meters, I'm going to change it again here. If that is larger than 800, I want to show the expression that I've just created here. If it's not, I want to show an empty string. This actually means that I only want to see the label for the polygons that are at a size larger than 800 square meters. And now I can say OK again. And now you can see the labels are actually the same, but I only see them for the larger polygons. I hope this gave you some insight into how you can use the label expressions to actually get to that label you're looking for.